Okay, in this video we're going to talk about compression and stretch basics. So we're going to apply both horizontal compression and stretch and vertical stretch and compression to graphs. In this case, today we're going to use the parent function, uh, the quadratic parent function, which is y equals x squared. But the uh, same rules apply again to all parent functions. So let's take a look. We're going to cover the horizontal compression and stretch first and then the vertical stretch and compression. So what you'll notice here when we're in parentheses with x again in parentheses with x here we have a compression or a stretch in the x direction. So that is a horizontal compression or stretch. So the horizontal compression occurs when our number is uh, with x is greater than 1 and our stretch occurs when we're between 0 and 1 so uh, we'll, we'll do our number whatever that is is less than 1 but greater than 0 we're going to get a horizontal stretch All right and then on the vertical stretch we're opposite of that so we're going to either stretch in the or compress in the y direction because we're outside the parentheses and it's also opposite here because we're stretching when we are greater than 1 instead of between 0 and 1 like before and we are compressing when we are between 0 and 1 so the compression and stretch are opposite of the way it was with the horizontal Okay, so horizontal compression occurs when we're multiplying inside the parentheses and it's the number we're multiplying by is bigger than 1. Horizontal stretch occurs when we're inside the parentheses and our number that we're multiplying by is between 0 and 1, so a fraction between 0 and 1. And vertical stretch occurs when we're multiplying outside the parentheses with x and it's greater than 1. And Vertical compression occurs when we're multiplying outside of the parentheses with x and our number we're multiplying by is between 0 and 1. So let's look at some examples and get those graphed. So again we have our parent function of y equals x squared so we're going to graph that again. We've got our table already pulled out of the calculator here and then we've got y1 is our 2x squared which is our horizontal compression. And then we've got our y2 is 0.5x squared, which is our horizontal stretch. Okay, so we're going to graph our parent function first. So same way we did before, we've got our table here. So we've got our vertex at 0, 0 as always. And then we were using the points 2, 4 and negative 2, 4 to fill in our graph here. So we've got 2, 4 there. Symmetrical on the opposite side would be negative 2, 4. Graph that in here. Alright. Then let's do our horizontal compression first. So let's put go to our table here and that was our y1 2x squared all in parentheses. So in this case we'll use the points 0, 0 again course. Our vertex is still at 0, 0. And then we're going to get the points negative 1, 4 and 1, 4. So that would be right here and right here. So 1, 4, negative 1, 4. Still symmetrical about the y-axis. We're just horizontally compressing. So let's draw the graph and we'll talk about what's happening here. Looks more like this. Okay, so essentially what we have done is we have taken this point right here and compressed it horizontally, so compressed it in the x direction, and then we have taken this point right here and also compressed it horizontally in the x direction. So imagine grabbing the graph right here with your hand, grabbing the graph right here with your hand and pushing inward. So that is essentially what we're doing. Compression is when you push inward, right? So what the behavior of the graph you'll notice in the table we were at negative 3 9 now we're at negative 3 36 we were at 3 and 9 and now we're at 3 and 36 so way up here so by the time we get to x equals 3 up here we're way up off off of our graph off of our coordinate plane that we have here so what is happening is this graph is increasing at a more rapid rate 
That is the effect and the behavior that comes from a horizontal compression. All right, now let's look at a horizontal stretch. So let's graph these points. So we will use the point negative 2, 1 and 2, 1. And then we're actually going to graph an extra set of points for this one. So let's also grab the point negative 3, 2.25, which would be about right here, and the point 3. 2.25 which would be about right here so now you can see that we are much wider like this this graph is approximate so you can see here we have taken these points on our parent function and stretched it out this way so we are we are stretching it, so we are grabbing it and stretching it in the horizontal direction like this. So we, we essentially grabbed these points and we stretched them or pulled them outward. So compression, we pushed inward, and in stretch, we're pulling outward. So the effect here is that the graph gets wider. That's what happens with horizontal stretch. And the behavior of the graph, notice it is now increasing at a slower rate because our parent function was at negative 3, 9, and now we're at only at negative 3, 2.25. So we're, we're down here instead of up here. Our parent function, compared to our parent function, our horizontally stretched graph is now increasing at a less rapid rate. Okay, so that's the behavior of what's happening with the graph. So now let's look at our next sequence which is a vertical stretch and a vertical compression. Alright so let's put our parent function in here. Let's graph that. We still have 0, 0. We have 2 and 4. We have negative 2 and 4. So we can see this better. I'm also going to put 3 and 9 in here because we can fit that and negative 3 and 9 so we're still symmetrical about the y-axis of course so that just so we can get a better idea of what's happening here so here is our parent function first we're going to do our vertical stretch so we're multiplying by a number bigger than 1 we are not inside a parentheses so we're going to be going in the y direction or vertical. Y is vertical, X is horizontal. Okay, so let's put in our vertical stretch graph. So we look at our Y equals here. We have the point negative 2, 8 and 2, 8. We still have 0, 0 by the way. Now we have 2 and 8 and we have negative 2 and 8. Okay, so let's let's get that graphed in here. All right. So what we have done here is we have grabbed these points. So we've grabbed, say, right here, and we have stretched this thing vertically. So we've grabbed it right here and stretched it vertically like this. Like we imagine grabbing these two points with your hands and stretching them vertically. So grabbing it like you're standing on it down here and you're stretching it vertically. So the behavior of the graph and it's also reflected in the table we are increasing at a more rapid rate so before we were at 3 9 now we're at 3 18 we were at 2 comma 4 and now when we're our x is 2 our y value is all the way up at 8 okay so and if you look at these values look what's going on here we have 1 1 and then we have 1 2 we have 2 4 2 8 3 9 and then 3 18 what's happening here our y values are doubling in this case. Our y values are, are actually doubling in this case. Okay? Because we are based on order of operations here. And let's, let's discuss that quickly. Notice in order of operations up here, our PEMDAS, if you'll remember, uh, parentheses comes first, then the exponent. So here we're multiplying by 2 and then squaring that. So that's why you don't see a doubling going on here when we have this case because we double it and then we square it for horizontal compression. Now for a vertical stretch, 
because we don't have that parentheses, we are going to do our exponent first. So we square the x and then we multiply it by 2. So that is why when we have this x squared graph and then we essentially take that x squared graph and then double it because our order of operations again, exponents come first, PEMDAS, remember this, I'll write this down, PEMDAS. Okay, it was parentheses, exponents, multiplication and division, and then addition and subtraction. That's what that stood for. So we are, again, we're here performing our exponent operation, so we're squaring and then multiplying by 2. So that's why we get the doubling that's going on. Okay, so last one. This will be our vertical compression. So we still have the point zero, 0, here. Our vertex is still at zero, 0, So let's use, we'll graph a couple points. We'll do 2, 2, and negative 2, 2. So we have 2 and 2, and negative 2, 2, right here. And then we have the points negative 3, 4.5, and 3, 4.5. So 3 and 4 and a half, about right here. Our my vertical stretch arrows are in the way a little bit, but that's okay. And again, th we have negative three, four and a half. Negative three, four and a half right here. All right, so the effect on this graph is like this. All right, so this is a vertical compression. So imagine here that we grab the graph again, our parent function right here and right here at the points 2, 4 and negative 2, 4 and we are compressing it down. So we are like standing on it and then we push down on it right here. So we're pushing down on it and it causes it to widen out. So it's increasing at a slower rate now. We have pushed it down and it caused it to kind of bow out. Imagine if you uh, were standing on something flexible and you pushed it down, you uh, pressed it vertically, you pushed down on it vertically, it would widen out. It would cause it to bow out more. So we get a wider graph, which in turn our data then is increasing at a slower rate. So let's compare it with our parent function. We had negative 3, 9. Now we have negative 3, 4 and a half. We had 3, 9. Now we have 3, 4 and a half. We had negative 2 and 4. And now we have negative 2, 2. So notice, in this case, when you have vertical compression, we are essentially cutting these values in half. Not essentially, that's exactly what we're doing. Notice we had 9 with negative 3. Now we have 4 and a half. Half of 9 is 4 and a half. Then paired with negative 2 for x, we had a y of 4. Now we have a y of 2. 2 is half of 4. Because of the way that this is set up, we are squaring and then we are taking half of that. Okay, so that, that's the behavior of vertical stretch and vertical compression. So let's do a quick review. Horizontal compression means that we're going to increase at a faster rate. We are compressing it in the horizontal or x direction. For a horizontal stretch, we are grabbing the graph and making it wider essentially. We are stretching it in both the positive x direction and the negative x direction. So that causes our data to increase at a slower rate. With vertical stretch, we are grabbing the graph and stretching it upward causes us to be more narrow and our in turn our data increases at a faster rate in our table and of course it's reflected on a graph with vertical compression we are grabbing the graph and pushing down on it essentially and that is causing a vertical compression a wider graph occurs and our data increases at a slower weight rate our y values increase at a slower rate alright so that is vertical stretch and compression and horizontal stretch and compression.